this is how I lock the door in here. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. This, this is a Novostella Smart Bulb, something I've talked about it in this video. Now, this is not the only product from Novostella. I also have these panels and the floodlights, which I use as a fill light in here because otherwise half of the frame would be not exposed at all. Anyway, back to the topic. I've got these uh, to review, but since the review is done and I teased, I'm going to flash them. This is the video about flashing Tasmota on Novostella products. Now, Novostella might not love me for that, but, well, I've got them here and, well, it's possible. Because the Novostella products use two things. They use Smart, Life and Tuya app. You can use Tuya Convert system to actually flash Tasmota on it. And the process is super simple and only takes a couple of minutes. I'm going to walk you through the process, show you how it's done on one of the devices, but the same principle apply to both smart bulb and the floor lights, they already flashed. So big shout out to Brian's Edge adventure page, which provided with a template for the smota, so I didn't have to brain that one out. It saved me a lot of time. It was that precious time that I've saved that the Noldred took from me. Damn you, Noldred, why are you so difficult at time? Okay, let's get started. But first, we need to reset the light. And thankfully, it's nothing like uh, this Wi-Fi module, which took 20, 20, 20 clicks to get reset. Novostella light only needs three. Three. If it's a new installation of Raspbian, just make sure to enable wireless LAN uh, so you wouldn't have any problems. Once this is uh, done, just head to Tuya Convert website and follow the installation steps. Uh, it's just a simple script to execute and after that you'll be able to continue. Just navigate to the Tuya Convert folder and start with start flash script. If you're using the same Raspberry Pi for Node-RED, you'll be asked to terminate a couple of network services like Mosquito, etc. Just follow this. It will, uh, the Raspberry Pi will start the AP point, so you use your mobile to connect. And once you connect it, uh, reset the device you want to flash. Uh, with the Novostella, just unplug it three times and then press enter. That process of finding the device and flashing and backing up should take about uh, three minutes, after which you will uh, be given a final prompt to flash either Espurna or Tasmota on it. Obviously, I put a Tasmota on it, so I've authorized it, and the flash takes about a minute or so. After that, the light will probably stop flashing and you will be able to um, detect the Wi-Fi point on the mobile. So go back to your mobile point, look for Tasmota Wi-Fi access point and uh, access it. Load the page and provide uh, Tasmota installation with your Wi-Fi credentials. Once the device is authorized on the network, navigate to IP of the device or use the host name to access it. And we have to go and finish the configuration. So go to configure the template. You can either do it manually or just copy and paste the configuration uh, in this field. So I've used that uh, uh, the configuration I found online and it worked just beautifully. So uh, also you can uh, take advantage of uh, this field and just rename your device to wherever you want. Once this is done, just simply save uh, changes, activate the template, and you'll see a new screen for your Tasmota containing all uh, sliders. At this point, I wanted to make sure everything works, so I just uh, used the sliders to change different settings and watch the light uh, being quite responsive. There is a small delay on the video mostly because the time code isn't very well synchronized, but I was able to reproduce all colors and use all the settings uh, presented in Tasmota just fine. So once this is done, all you have to do is just jump into Node-RED and take care of that part. Welcome to the Node-RED part, which is probably the most exciting part uh, and you are looking forward to it. So let's get started. So this is the dashboard and you can see there are basic stuff. So you have toggle with a status indicator as the temperature control with a nice feedback. The same goes for brightness. You can set the minimum and the maximum brightness and the color picker. 
So let's uh, pick this apart. <laughs> That's fun. And uh, I'll show you how it's done. First of all, I want the information to be present in this update in here. So I want the flow context updated every time something happens. I'm going to refer that uh, whenever I deal with different stuff. So I do that by obviously subscribing to this topic. And bear in mind that my uh, topic is slightly changed because I all first have a mm, topic and then I have a pref uh, prefix. So by default, these two are swapped around. So if you don't have it this way, then uh, don't be confused. Now I'm parsing this as a JSON and do a bit of a processing in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, download whatever is here already and then merge it with uh, the new data. That, that way I'm always going to have a full set in here and I can draw from this and that's quite important. So if you take a look at this, uh, I can uh, merge this using object assign. This is a very clever function. I know you're probably not interested in that, but if you ever wanted to get two different payloads, merge them together and make sure the values are override, uh, overridden. So in here, the current one's gonna be overridden by data and that's what I want. And that's being basically just saved in here. And I have a status node just to uh, show the status on and off. Uh, uh, and also I've, uh, I'm doing a small translation in here because the default um, Tasmota is going to post on and off and I want that true or false. I'm trying to keep all my values to true and false if it's just a power state for the consistency. All right, with that done, with, uh, it's going to start with something simple, which is a toggle. See the toggle in here updates the stuff. It's a good thing. It only uses one button. Obviously, you can still use the inject nodes like here. And to toggle the power, you have to submit that to this topic, which is the command power. Now, the toggle functionality works very easy. I download the current state it's from uh, Flow. And that's way I know what is the current state of my device. And obviously, if the power state is true, I'm going to send the message payload false and all the way around. That's it. It's toggle done. Now let's uh, start to do something more complicated. Uh, let's start with brightness. So in brightness, you'll see that I've resolved it with a slider. I have a slider in here and I've set the minimum value to be 10 because if you wanted to turn it off, just use the toggle. Come on, you can use the toggle and maximum 100. And then there is a slider, slider and some um, brightness display this way. So um, the minimum and the maximum is quite uh, obvious. I'm just sending a number integer 10 and uh, 100 to a slider. Uh, whatever I'm sending from a slider, uh, it's from zero to five with the increments of five, which is enough. I don't really need more um, accurate control. And I've chosen the con continuously while sliding because it gives you a better feedback. And what I do that uh, information is just directly submit to this topic uh, command dimmer because that's what it takes. It just takes the number. Obviously, you can submit that uh, using normal payloads uh, or you can just pick it random. There is a random one from one zero to 100 if you want to do it for some reason this way. OK, another thing that the Novostel uh, products can do, the, the ones I featured in here, are controls over the color temperature. So I wrote a driver for the color temperature as well. And this is the tricky part, right? It doesn't really take the color temperature in Kelvin. You have to translate it to values being between 153 and 500. Those are arbitrary, um, really, values. And the plot twist is that 500 is the, actually the lowest value and the 153 is the highest value. So you had to flip them around. So if you want a warm light, you submit 500 to a topic this, which is a command CT, CT, color temperature, obviously. And uh, if you want a cold light, uh, you submit a low value 153, and this is the, the higher Kelvin value. So 153 would be 6,500 in this case. And it was a bit of a complication how to deal with with slider. So in a slider, what you get, you select a lower temperature and a higher temperature, and I'll give you a 3,800 of span. And I needed to get that range to be um, basically translated into a scale of between 153 and 500. And I did that with this clever little thing. It actually calculates everything, uh, rearranges the values the way I want, and provides a correct value. So this is how you do it. If you want, just use that function node and you will be able to complete uh, that color temperature control. Obviously, I submit just the normal values in Kelvins to a 
uh, feedback so you can get that feedback in here showing you what is the current value next up is the color control itself and the color control was slightly complicated at first because uh, there are a couple of different ways now first of all there is a color picker in dashboard and you can submit the values in uh, h s v which is basically pretty much the same as h s l and uh, it's being also named as h s um, b for brightness so it's a little bit confusing but h s v basically what it is you've got your hue saturation and your um, value which states for brightness and now you, there's a couple of things that you have to do because you submit that to this color uh, to this topic which is novostella command uh, hsb in this case hsb uh, color uh, it has to be a string containing those true details so first one it goes from 0 to 300 and on a, three, a 360 degree wheel this is the color then you have a hue and then you have a brightness intensity and that's how you submit this now in order to do it with the color picker you actually have to uh, translate this slightly so first of all i need to round up the hue because the hue has a large floating point so we're going to round it up to a um, nice even number uh, and then the saturation and value they are as a um, in a range of 0 to 1 and I need them to be from 0 to 100 so you just multiply them by 100 and then you translate that uh, all into a string and uh, add it all together and submit it to a payload and that's how you deal with a color. Now onto the smart functions I promise fun uh, functionality with um, Amazon Echo and the Google Home um, Assistant as well so let's gonna start with Amazon and in uh, with Amazon I'm using that uh, skill I've talked about it before, I'm just going to link it in here, so you, if you want to know how it works and how to get it started, I'm just going to focus on explaining how it works. So I'm not supplying this to any topics because the topic is going to have to be set programmatically. So in my function node, you've noticed there are three different if conditions, so each time I'm going to be doing something else. Now, when you submit a voice command to an Amazon Echo device, it uh, gives you a command. So it basically tells you, uh, tells you what did you do. If you um, try to turn on the light, you'll send a turn on request, turn off request. If you want to turn it off, if you want to do the brightness, you'll set percentage request, etc. So based on that, I can select my topic and then submit the payload. Now, for the most part, it's really straightforward because for turning on and off, I already got true and false and that's sorted. For setting percentage, the percentage is already an integer, so I can submit that straight away. That's sorted. But for the call request, I needed to translate it again. So it's a very similar stuff that I did um, previously. So I have to round up the hue, multiply saturation and values by 100 to bring it to a proper um structure and then encode it to a string and submit it to our test motor. Lastly, it's probably the most problematic one which was the Google Assistant one because I used um, Nora. If you want to know how to use Nora then I'm gonna link another write-up in here and I'll give you all the examples but basically I'm using a Nora node and Nora node is a bit tricky because unlike uh, Amazon device it doesn't give you any requests so I needed to come up with a different solution and I know this is a bit of a mouthful in here on the screen but uh, I just quickly explain how it works because I do not have any information from um, Google device uh, to what I want to do there is not really um, a way to separate everything and trying to send three payloads it's uh, unreliable and clunky so the way I've approached it is when I send a message request via voice command through a Google ecosystem what it does it takes this request so this is requests um, basic in here it takes this request and compares it against the values that are already stored and if one of these values from the message uh, from the context from the flow context has been changed then I'm going to just action this and there are a couple of issues with it but for the most part it works okay so if my payload on and off it's uh, different to a payload that already stored it means I updated just the payload for power so I'm just toggling it on and off so that's why I'm doing it here um, for dimming it's a very similar story if my dimming value is different but the color value is the same so the color value has not changed 
I'm setting a first I'm setting the color temperature and I needed to pick up just the color temperatures if you want a different one just pick a value between 153 and 500 but uh, the in this way um, Nora can't really control the color temperature of the bulb which is a bit pants but there's not much I can do about it so it sets the default color of the light and then you can submit the dimmer values to um, if programmatically from the payload brightness and then it will first set the a color temperature and then it will set the brightness and you probably anticipating the cha change by now it means that if you already have a color selected and you just want to change the brightness it's not going to be possible because it's going to reset the color and send you a um one of the warm um values so that's the shortcoming of it however the color still works so if the color is different uh, to the color saved then what it's going to do it's going to change the color and it's going to update the brightness i'm doing it this way because in actual google home widget you have color palette which you can choose and they come both with brightness and changes to the color value so i'm unable to detect both even separately uh, those would mess up the dimming value since the dimming value is more important than colors then i figure out i can just set the dimmer first and then change the color and the dimmer will update to a value it's a bit of a workaround it's clunky at times provides small flashes in the certain circumstances when you're changing between certain colors but that's the best i could do okay so you know how to do it if you want either smart bulb or flood lights the links are in the description of this video you're going to find also a write-up uh, discussing everything in details that we just covered in here you're going to find the download for the node red 2 by the way so why would you flash it first of all you're going to make them truly yours even if something's going to happen to tuya or smart life apps you're still going to have the control over your lights second of all for some awesome automation now nothing stops me to link it to my phone when i'm arriving back at home to highlight entire home in purple yeah per definitely purple <laughs> Okay, so if you want to follow me and see how that's gonna turn up, you know what to do. You know how the YouTube works, I do not have to explain you this, but what I have to tell you is that I also write articles, and if you want to get notifications about those, it's best to follow me on one of the social media of your choice, so you could get an instant update. So much guys, thanks so much for watching, and definitely I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care, bye!